of Luke, chapter 6, and I'd love you to look at verse 37. That's page 1044, it's the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 37. And while you're finding it, I'll read it out. Verse 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I don't know about you, but um, when I watch football on the television, or even when I'm completely swamped with fans on the North End Road in Fulham, heading for Stamford Bridge to watch Chelsea play, I see a people divided. One team wearing their colours, singing their songs, chanting their chants, and then on the other side of the street, or on the opposing side of the stadium, I see another team wearing their colours, singing their songs, singing their chants. And as with that football match analogy, sometimes in life we can be divided. We can think of people as being others, not like us at all, speaking different words, different languages, having different views, and having different ideas than we have. In 1914, a group of young idealists from a terrorist group called the Black Hand Brigade didn't like the political status quo of the time. And they wanted to do something about it and change it by acts of violence. They persuaded one of the group, a young idealist called Gabriel Princep, to get involved. He was told to assassinate Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo on the 28th of June, 1914. And he was successful. He killed the Duke, and he also killed the Duke's wife who was traveling with him. That single act of violence started a massive chain reaction that led to the beginning of the First World War, less than a month later. During those four years, from 1914 to 1918, it caused the death of two million German soldiers, 1.7 million Russian soldiers, 1.4 million French soldiers, 900,000 British soldiers, 50,000 American soldiers, along with millions of civilian casualties, men, women, and children. In 1939, another idealist wanted to change the status quo. And he also, in an act of violence, invaded Poland. This time, his name was Adolf Hitler. His action started another chain reaction, this time triggering the start of the Second World War, which started in 1939 and went through to 1945. During those five years, 61 countries were involved, 1.7 million people, and at the time, three quarters of the population of the planet were involved. And it resulted in the death of over 50 million people, with millions of others injured. Lives and generations lost, ruined forever. By really two people wanting to change things in acts of violence. In Luke 6, verse 31, Jesus talks about, well, in the whole chapter of, of Luke, it talks about judging other people. And in verse 31, Jesus says, do to others as you would have them do to you. And in that, he's not just talking about friends and family or people who are like us that we can relate to. He's talking about all others do unto them as you would have done unto yourself. Even those who mock us, even those who hate us, even those who don't live by our standards, even those who don't have our values and our views, even those who don't believe in the democracy that we believe in, or the freedom that we believe in, or the human rights that we believe in. Today, all over the world, millions of men and women and children will gather together for a service of remembrance like we're doing now, and we will do at all the services throughout the day in respect of fallen, of those fallen in the war, past and present, military and civilian. 
Do you know there's only been one year since 1945 that a British service person hasn't been killed in operations around the world? And that year was 1969. And that fact is still true today. Since that same year, 1969, the British forces have been deployed to Northern Ireland, the Falklands, the Balkans, Bosnia, Croatia, Macedonia, Albania, Kosovo, Sierra Leone, East Timor, Iraq, Afghanistan, and many more. And I've experienced some of those conflicts myself, having spent 15 years in the army. Today is a really difficult day for lots of people for lots of reasons, mostly because of loss and suffering. So why is it important that we have Remembrance Sunday? Well, I've got three thoughts for you to ponder during the day and to make you remember them or to help you, help you remember them. They spell out the word war. The first letter, W, I've put for willingness. As in the scripture in Luke 6 that we just looked at, we have to be willing to treat others as we would want to be treated ourselves. To have a willingness to forgive. Maybe not forget, but to forgive. To try and move on from the situation that we're caught in. That might mean forgiving a whole nation for what they've done. Or it might mean forgiving a friend or a family member for their actions. And their actions have caused us pain and sorrow. And it hurts. But we have to try and forgive. Otherwise, we find ourselves stuck. And if we have Christ living within us, then we can draw on his strength to help us overcome that pain and that situation that we find ourselves in. Otherwise, we will be stuck, finding ourselves unable to move forward. Unforgiveness has a corrosive effect on us. Not on the person that you're not forgiving, it has a corrosive effect on us, on the person who holds that unforgiveness. And that will stay with us. It will stay with us in any relationships we have, and it will stay with us with any possible future relationships that we might have. And part of caring for one another is participating in one another's feelings. One recent president of the United States, his strapline used to be, I feel your pain. And when you look at that line that he said, we're meant to feel each other's pain. Maybe especially today. Otherwise, how do we relate to one another? But we're also meant to feel each other's joy and excitement and share that as well. In 2004, the world witnessed one of the most devastating natural disasters we have ever seen. Millions of us watched on our TV screens as thousands lost their homes and their lives in the tsunami. For me, one of the most important things that was done and is still being done for the people affected, people affected in Hindu India, Buddhist Thailand, and Muslim Indonesia, is to reach out and care for the hundreds and thousands of families who've lost their homes, lost their livelihood, lost their family and friends and help those people that don't share our culture, who don't share our beliefs, who don't share our faith, who are different from us in so many ways. It's understandable that your heart is touched with the plight of those who have suffered one of those terrible disasters that we witness from time to time in history. But we must also care about people whose needs don't seem, well at first anyway, overwhelmingly emotional, such as alcoholics, prostitutes, prisoners, homeless, elderly, the sick, and the mentally ill. Helping those people who sometimes it's not easy to draw close to. It's not easy. They won't let you love them sometimes. They're unlovable sometimes, or they seem to think they are. But we should be willing to draw near to them and care for them even though they are not like us in so many ways. Romans 12, verse 15 says this, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. And I'll add a little bit. Whether they are like us or not, 
whether they share our values, our beliefs or not, we are meant to weep with them and rejoice with them. And if we can create within ourselves a willing heart that cares about what is happening in other people's lives, whether they're like us or not, then I believe we will be motivated to do God's work in practical, physical, and spiritual ways, helping people. The second letter, A, for attitude. In 1971, Sergeant Michael Willits of the 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment cleared a room in Springfield Road Police Station in Northern Ireland of women, men, and children. Why? Because the IRA had just thrown a bomb into the police station which had landed in that room with a very short fuse. The room had been cleared and then Willits slammed the door shut to contain the bomb. But then realizing that the door wasn't strong enough to absorb the blast, he pressed his body against the door, sheltering everyone behind him. The bomb exploded and Sergeant Willits was instantly killed. Sergeant Willits, in that moment, decided not to chase after the terrorists or the bombers. He chose to stay, having a sacrificial attitude, giving hope and life to others for future generations. Again, in Romans chapter 15, verse 5, it says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Jesus Christ had. Attitude. It's been said that in the 20th century, it's estimated that there were over 140 million people killed in wars around the world. Each of them has a story, like Sergeant Willits. Maybe a story of bravery, maybe a story of fear. And if we were in their situation, would we dare to judge them? Maybe we would, but not today. Today is not a day for judgment. Today is a day of remembering what they did, because they all died for a cause. Third and final letter is R for remember. The Bible shows us to link remembering with thanksgiving, especially through the communion service that we go through. Jesus tells us, doesn't he, always to remember. Do this in remembrance of me, he says. And if we acknowledge and share with those who have suffered and died, it will help us in coping with our own grief when it comes, our own loss when it comes. And it will surely come at some point in our lives. Maybe not through war, but through illness, through divorce, through unemployment, through death of a close friend or a relative. But it will come, and we will all possibly experience some sort of loss in our lives. And by remembering the past, it's just not about recalling and reflecting on past events and, and look at all these facts and figures. It's more than that. It's about carrying these events and these lessons learned with us into our present and into our future so that they soak into us and we don't make the same silly mistakes again and again and again. We learn from the past and what's gone on. These are tough issues for us as Christians to discuss, but it's critical that we discuss them and talk about them. We just can't leave politics to politicians. Jesus was someone who dealt with really difficult questions, as he did in this about judgment, as he did in lots of other scriptures and stories. And this Sunday, we deal with a difficult question. We deal with war and violence and the effects that that's had on us over the generations and even today. And especially the two world wars are what we're remembering. For me today is about having a willingness to step out of our comfort zone and to help others who, who are not like us. It's about having an attitude like that of Christ that puts others first before ourselves. It's also about remembering those who have gone before us so that we might learn from that and not make mistakes in the future. For if we can begin to see how human suffering is interpreted and given meaning through the passion and resurrection of Christ, we can then begin to glimpse that wonderful truth and receive that hope. And that hope changes everything. At the age of 32, 
after seven years' service in the army and one tour of Afghanistan already behind him. A British soldier was driving through Helmand province in Afghanistan when his Land Rover hit a roadside bomb. The explosion was so powerful it catapulted this soldier over 30 meters out of the vehicle. The blast blew his left leg off above the knee and damaged his right leg so badly that it had to be amputated as well. As he lay dazed on the roadside, he'd, he heard more explosions and he heard the screams and shouts of his comrades, of his friends and the other vehicles that were being blown up as well. Then in the silence, he described how he felt the sun fall on his face. And as he lay there, he prayed. He said, Lord, whatever happens, I thank you for my life. But if you have a role for me in the future to be an inspiration for others, then let me live. He was rushed back to Camp Bastion. He was declared dead on arrival and was being prepared to be put into a body bag and repatriated back to the UK. When a young doctor noticed a very weak pulse. Last August, Derek, Derek entered the Olympic Stadium to represent Britain in the discus at the Paralympics. Derek said in an interview, I am no Superman. I have had some very low points in my life, but I am determined to have an attitude that inspires others. Derek has gone on now to set up a school to help disadvantaged and disabled kids get into sport. Tolerance, grace, and faith in others can change a person, change a nation, change a country, and maybe change the world if we have a willingness to help others, an attitude to put others first, and if we can remember what's happened in the past, it will help us go forward.